After this introduction, I would like to focus on the implication of the use of probiotics in premature infants. As it was mentioned already here, the um, postnatal colonization of no commensal, no pathogenic bacteria is a key factor in the maturation of the intestine. It is an essential prerequisite for the maturation and optimum functioning of the intestinal uh, uh, immune response. The bacteria that colonize the intestine will interact with the endothelium through what it was called toll-like receptors. And this interaction is what has been called the crosstalk between the epithelium and the microbiota. And this is thought to be the essential and most important mechanism why the microbiota, the colonizing bacteria, will regulate the immune response. This is also essential and critical for the development of oral tolerance. Also, these bacteria will migrate to the lymphatic nodes and will stimulate the T cells that will mature into IgE, A producing cells. And also, the initial colonization of this infant is essential and critical to determine what will be the permanent microbiota in adulthood. So what happens with newborns in the prenatal life when they are in the uterus, they have a colon that is sterile. And right after birth, they get exposed to the bacteria that is normally in the vagina and the perineal area and get rapidly colonized with uh, first with facultative anaerobes and right after with strict anaerobes that becomes predominant during the first few months of life until they are weaned from the breastfeeding and in which the levels of bifidobacteria of the proportion will decrease. Obviously, this initial colonization depends on that, but there is other, many other factors that will influence the colonization, like the age, the type of delivery, the maternal flora, the environment, the diet, and the use of antibiotics. And it's not known, but maybe there are gene receptors that will, ex gene that will express receptors. So what happened with premature infants? How these premature infants get colonized? So uh, another factor that uh, may influence the uh, delayed colonization is the intestinal flora and the mode of feeding. It's not only the quantity of feedings, but also the mode of feeding. These are graphs of demonstrating the intestinal flora of uh, 13 full-term, vaginally delivered uh, uh, infants, normal healthy infants, that were fed with breastfeeding or formula feeding. Just notice that the uh, y-axis is a logarithmic um, scale, so means that one point means 10 times higher. And just pay attention to the yellow line in both sides, which represent the bifidobacteria counts, and the green line that represent the enterobacteria counts. As you can see in the breastfeeding infants, the bifidobacteria becomes soon predominant while the enterobacteria start to decrease versus on the infants that were uh, fed by formula in which the enterobacteria is predominant and it's only late, close to the 30 days of life when the bifidobacteria become predominant. Similar thing happened with the lactobacilli, which increase sooner than in the babies who are breastfed and reaches higher proportion in those babies versus the babies who are formula fed. Very important is another factor, which is the use of antibiotics in these infants. Most of the premature infants will be admitted to a neonatal intensive care unit, and a large, very large proportion of them, they will receive antibiotics in the first week of life. Um, and this is a study in which uh, we see the difference between, in different strains of bifidobacteria and lactobacillus bacilli, in infants that were on no antibiotics and ampicillin and gentamicin, which are the antibiotics that are mostly used on premature infants in the first week of life. Um, the impact of the antibiotics is more dramatic in the anaerobes than in the aerobes organism. So on the exposure to antibiotics, even if they are narrow spectrum antibiotics, will that dramatically decrease the concentration of this bacteria in newborns. So, in conclusion, there is uh, several reasons why premature infants are the most affected by disruption of the intestinal flora and why the use of probiotics in these infants may be beneficial for them in a variety of ways. 
There are several studies looking at clinical outcomes with the use of probiotics in premature infants, and the results of those studies are compiled in this meta-analysis that was published in Lancet in 2007, and it's the compilation of uh, seven studies. And the conclusion was the same, that the exposed to uh, probiotics in premature infants decreases the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis and decreases the, the risk of mortality. The, the risk of sepsis was no statistically significant. And there is other studies uh, also trying to uh, look at the prevention of sepsis uh, by bacterial sepsis and, and fungal sepsis in premature infants. Uh, several, there are several of them, and um, this is the one that has a larger number, but um, despite the number, you see the incidence of sepsis was, they were ba big babies, big premature infants, like around uh, close to 36 weeks. So the incidence of sepsis was very low, so the study, even when there is a trend, doesn't reach statistical significance. So our task now is to try to identify uh, probiotics that may be suitable for premature infants. And when we think on probiotics for uh, newborns, as uh, he mentioned before, we think on bifidobacteria and lactobacillus because they are the predominant bacteria in the intestine of healthy, full breastfed infants. And there are different strains that are used. These are the most commonly used. But what we have to look at whenever we think in using uh, probiotic is to identify what is a true probiotic. Not all the live active cultures are probiotics. And as per the lab, if a probiotic has to be a uh, bacteria that resists the technological process in, that needed to be delivered, resists, I mean, survives the passing through the um, stomach and the intestine and survives the gastric acids and the bile salts. Uh, is not pathogenic and not invasive and is able to colonize the human intestine. Also, we have to identify an effective probiotic, and for this, it's very important to really know which specific strain of a specific probiotic it has been demonstrated to be effective in a specific disease. Important, too, is that despite the wild extensive use of probiotics you cannot overlook the safety concerns. And there are concerns in terms of infection because they are a live bacteria, so it can be uh, infect, produce infection. There is, in the literature, there is a report of occasional cases of bacteremia produced by the same bacteria that was given as a probiotic. But in the randomized controlled trials that have been done in premature infants, there is no serious adverse effect events or no um, documentation or report of sepsis or infection. The concerns related with the digestion and tolerance of the probiotics probably are more related with the substrate in which the probiotic is delivered more than the probiotic. Beside the fact that the Eating bacteria is an old practice, an old idea. Um, it looks like a, we are coming to a new area uh, in which we can look at the probiotics the same way that we may look to the antibiotics. So antibiotics, they have different effects. They have different side effects. We use different combinations. Um, we may be are seeing the, that we are going from the age of the antibiotics to the age of the probiotics. Thank you.